All right. Happy Father's Day. Listen, I, as I was working on some things uh, this week, it just got into my heart that today, you know, dads are the ones we really ought to ask, what do you want to hear on Father's Day? What does God use? What does God speak into your life that helps you as a father? And so I was watching for those kinds of things as we were talking about Father's Day. And for most guys, it's like, okay, you can preach from the scripture and say, I need to do better. And I know that that's true. So, okay, I'm going to hang with that and, and understand that that's true. But today, you know, could you speak to me about how the whole fatherhood thing works? Now, maybe it's too late for me to do this with my own children, but I'll pick it up as a grandfather. Or maybe I'll be a person who's a Sunday school teacher or something like that with kids, and, and I'll be able to help them uh, have someone in their life that does the process the way God intended. And so as we thought about that today, uh, for today, then... Um, the idea that you see on your Cypress heart is the, the idea of pointing people in the right direction while you walk alongside them. Now you're walking alongside them so that you can encourage them, so that you can help them avoid dangers. But the whole time you're traveling, they watch the way you travel. They see what matters to you. And so you are walking along and then that point comes in your life when you go to be with the Lord and you got them on a trajectory that they can continue to follow. That they receive from God himself through his word. This is the kind of idea we want to try to grab onto today. Now, for a lot of us as guys, give me a model to work with and, and please, I promise. We're coming to Scripture, okay? But y'all, listen for a second, guys. Okay. If I were to say to you, you were living at home, you got to this certain place in your life, and you had a job, and all of a sudden, and I know it doesn't really work that way much these days, but let's say you decided you were going to then buy a truck. Okay. If your dad was around for all of those years showing you what to do with the truck, right then you would know before you even bought the truck you got to do a few things guys what do we have to do with this truck you get a truck and then what well a lot of guys think you get a truck and then you just drive it right we had a situation some years ago where there was a member of our congregation and and she had a, a car she had a toyota and she drove it and every once in a while, the oil light would come on, so she'd put more in. She drove this car for, I don't know, three, four years. It had never had a new oil filter. And she, the oil light would come on, she'd put more oil in. And that was, okay, so do you have somebody that's teaching you, they got you on the right trajectory to, to know when I, when I buy a truck, first of all, I should have something. Money. Yes, I should have money. You see, there's a point in time when you get to the place where you realize you're not really on this earth to spend your parents' money. Amen? Okay. And so here you are. You're earning money. You're taking responsibility for yourself. Now you've got this truck. There are these things that usually, unless you've done really well already, somebody's got you on the trajectory to save money, then there are these things called payments. And you have to keep working to make those payments. So we're all done, right? No, no. You are a citizen of the United States of America. You have to have a sticker that says your vehicle is safe. You have to have a license plate. And to get those, you have to have this other thing called insurance. You're saying, oh, man, don't make this so complicated. Mom and dad buy me a truck and they handle it. Handle it, handle it. No, you see, 
this is the way we sometimes treat God, guys. God's just supposed to handle all the hard stuff and let us do what we do. And there's a problem with that. And it's the idea of being responsible to do what God put us here for. So if you ask yourself, well then how in the world am I supposed to know what God put me here for? Where am I going to find it? <laughs> and you're in church and the preacher's talking to you. So I know you know the answer to that question. It's in God, in His Word, and in how God functions. So, when God created this whole world, He created it in such a way that it would self-sustain, right? So, everything has something to eat. And in this system, the rain and the wind and every little detail of it goes to take care of what he has created now you may get a little further along in your journey guys and then all of a sudden you you find this the most beautiful girl you've ever seen in your life she just comes strolling in where have you been all of my life and there she is and you think lord this is the one i'm going to marry well if someone has you on the right trajectory they might have tried to help you understand that sometimes beauty is only skin deep. And so, now I heard what y'all thought. Some of you guys said, ugly goes all the way to the bone. <laughs> now be nice. Okay? It is important to look beyond the surface of people. Uh, you know, if you are just going to live your life looking at the surface of things, you're going to bump up into all kinds of problems and difficulties along the way. It's just the way it happens. And so now, if you're a person that's been put on the right trajectory, you're going to remember that you're walking with God to find the one that He would have you marry. You're walking with God to discover who they are and what their needs are and what your role is going to be in their experience. What's their strengths? And at the time that you meet them, they have no weaknesses. You'll find out later. Uh, but, you know, what are the areas that they need encouragement and support? All of these things, the reality. And so, guys, let me ask you this question. We got the truck. You remember when we got the truck? What did we do? Well, we... We had to make a decision between making the payments or, or getting the lift kit. And we decided, well, if we saved a little bit, maybe we could keep the truck and make the payments. But we got a lift kit, right? And then those funny little skinny tires look terrible. We have to, we have to get some big tires. And, of course, we need some blackout rims to go with that. And then... You know, I'm going to go mud. I really need a, a, a light bar over the cab. I got that. But then I went out mud, and the next thing you know, I was stuck. And I was really embarrassed because I didn't have a winch. So I got the right bumper, and I got me a winch so that I could pull myself out. And then I thought, you know, I have nothing nice to play my tunes. And so we've got to get some speakers in here need more woofers and that sort of thing. We'll get this all nice on the inside and, and this truck is going to be good. Okay? But then you did all of that. You accessorized all that. What, but you made the decision to, to get a wife. How have you accessorized her? Or do you love your truck more than her? And the guys are going, wait a second. I don't want my wife to have a light bar on her head. Okay, let me reel you back in for a second, guys. You said my truck needs these things to do whatever it is that we're going to do. What does your wife need? If you're going to have a life where you're going to follow the lead of some godly man, whether it's your own father or not, that's trying to help you walk according to what the Word of God says, then you have to realize 
that you're going to spend your life devoted to this person that you're marrying. And so how can you bless them? How can you make their life better? Because guys, I want to tell you, we all have learned that are older. Sometimes we don't do what we know, but we have learned the more we bless our wife, the more blessed we are. Now, I would love to see that saying put up on the wall. The more blessed, the more we bless our wife, the more blessed we are. But what do we see these days? What does the world put up on the wall? When mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Okay, well, we're going to say it in a negative way. Let's say it in a positive way. How can we bless our wife? Then as you think about uh, all of these things, you get a house. Well, that was so easy to say, wasn't it? How's your wallet doing now? You got the truck, you're taking care of that, you got the wife. Oh man, now you're really responsible for somebody else. Maybe they're working and they're being a part of that process. However, the God leads in your household. But you have to follow the Lord. We're following that trajectory. And now you're going to get a house. And you're not going to rent anymore. You're going to buy a house. That's so easy to say. Now you go over here and sit down with Nick. If you're thinking about doing that. Because he just with Kelly went through the idea of air conditioner compressor. Dies. Washing machine or dryer. Washing machine. Dies. The plumbing in the bathroom comes apart, starts flooding the house. You got every towel and comforter and everything in your life piled up trying to build a dam to keep this out from under your wood floor in your bedroom. And that's where it's going. Responsibilities. And so everything that we go into our life, the next step, step of complexity, it also has the potential for blessing. But sometimes, guys, we pursue the blessings. We pursue what we perceive to be good things because we have bought into a system that tells us what the world has to offer is what to live for. What the world has to offer is what you should live for. That's what we're told. I knew it. Nobody ever came out and told me that. Oh, yeah. Do you watch commercials? Do you listen to all your friends? I mean, you got a truck, and that truck was going to get you everywhere you needed to go. But your friends go mud, and all of a sudden, you got to get a lift kit. You got to, you know, who created this whole system? Uh, how many of you have the same computer you're using right now as the very first computer you ever bought? You're like, that is ridiculous. A few people do. That's I'm impressed. <laughs> You got to get a new computer every few years because, I mean, after all, the software changes and the hardware gets old. And, the, and, and, and besides, I couldn't find those little floppy drives anymore. So, whatever the case may be, the idea is simply this the world is set up to get us to consume. So that we'll work, so we'll consume. So we'll work, so we'll consume. And for a long time in my life, that's the way the system worked. Now it's gotten even worse because some people are working so that they consume and they're working so other people can consume because those people feel entitled to just live their life sitting at home consuming somehow. So are we on the trajectory that God has for us if in fact all we're doing is consuming or earning to consume? Where's the purpose of life in that? What is the whole point of thing? And so, you know, everything that you're going to deal with, you get the house, you've got electrical issues, you've got uh, water heater problems and all that sort of thing. So one, one day you decide, you know, I need to teach my child responsibility. They've been asking for a dog. We're going to get them a dog. And they're going to take care of it. Really? How naive are you? No, when a child gets a dog, and I promise there's scripture, right? y'all hang in there. When a child gets a dog, what do they think a dog is for? Yeah, you're going to play with it, you're going to pet it, 
you're going to do all that kind of stuff. That's what a dog is for. So then you can eventually convince the kid, okay, somebody's got to feed this dog. Okay, so what do I do? Okay, so here's the food. You put this scoop in there. And let's just say that the kid was eating on the same schedule as the dog. The kid might get to eat, I mean, the dog might get to eat about five times a week, you know, if the, the way the kid thinks about it. So you have to remind them. You have to remind them. And so now they eat. Well, then what happens after a little while after they eat? Somebody's got to take them outside. If they're a little puppy, the last dog we got was a very little puppy. Folks, I was, uh, I, I actually went and bought a pair of overalls, which I'm not an overalls person, right? But I went and got some because I knew that I was going to have to go at least one time in the middle of the night and get that dog and take it outside. If the dog was going to learn, where do you poop? Outside. Now, I get to stay inside and you have to go out. And so you gotta, you got to take care of all of this stuff. Do you think that that's hard? Wait until you have a baby. You see, so you're trying to teach responsibility and develop maturity and all those things by getting on a trajectory. And the, the challenge for today, the thing I want you to understand is that God is in the process. He is in the process with me. He is in the process with you of getting us on a trajectory that can allow him to come alongside as our ally. And it, I don't have anything to offer God as an ally. He's just chosen to include me in the process. But you talk about someone that is there to help and to direct and to support. And, and God is that ally in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 31. As you see in this passage, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Can you become?